All right, so the big thing to start with is the price. I even stuck it up in the right-hand corner on the slide to make sure. All right, so the price was on V11 was $1,400. Okay, it was $1,499. If you failed the exam, it was $1,499 again. All right. Also, with V11, there were two different types of CEH exams that you could take. The one we wanted was the ANSI exam. A-N-S-I. All right. That was the actual exam that was the multiple questions. Where you sit down and they ask you, you know, A, B, C, and D, and you make your answer. Now, the exam is four hours long. And it gives you 125 questions. The cost is now $1,199. Now, what I read when they released this and when I was setting up the new V12 class, one of the things that you can also do is before you take this exam, you can contact uh, EC Council. And you can pay a couple hundred dollars more. So you can almost take it back to the $1,400 price that it was in V11. You can pay a couple hundred dollars more. And you got to do this before you test. By paying a couple hundred dollars more and getting the more expensive test voucher, it will include a free retake for the couple hundred dollars. Where before... It was $1,499, and if you failed, it was $1,499. Basically, it was $1,500 a shot. Now what they've done is they've lowered the price, and they've also now included for a few hundred dollars more, you can actually do a free makeup exam. Now, as Thor just put it up in the comment, and I still agree with it, it still is way too expensive. Listen, when I got my first CEH certification, you're talking 20 over 20 years ago, all right? It literally ran me like $150. And my last certification, which was basically the V10, it was $300. When it went to $1,400, I stopped taking it. I'm not going to pay $1,400 to actually take an exam that's only good for two years. And unfortunately, that's the way it still is. Even for the $1,199, $1,200, it's still only good for two years. Now, one of the nice advantages of the new V12 exam is that on the V10, V11, even previous exams, all of the questions were not A, B, C, and D. They were not all multiple choice. There were actually questions on the exam that had you put into a certain situation and they wanted to know how you'd work your way out of it. All right. Now, it, it wasn't like a simulator, but you basically had to basically answer the question in the way that you needed to to solve the problem. So it was more like a scenario based. Now it's basically just A, B, C, D questions. Okay? Now, listen. Uh, are there Sims? No. No, they don't, they don't have the Sims. Same with Microsoft. Microsoft has actually stopped doing Sims. You know, Cisco does. But the problem is with the simulators is the more and more that these systems become complex the harder it is to actually do simulators on these practice tests. I mean, you got to build an environment in a question where somebody can actually go into almost a fake environment and do a task. And because of that, these types of questions always cause a lot of problems to the testing centers. So a lot of them have actually started moving away from doing simulated exams. Now, with that being said, with that being said, what if, what if you are better at 
figuring out the hacking and doing the actual tools than you are at actually doing A, B, C, and D. All right, what if you're better at that? Okay, well, with the V12, there is a CEH course, all right, it's a test. It's part of this class, but it's the actual practical exam. So there is a CEH practical. So you have two ways you can achieve this certification. All right. The first way is that you can literally just study and go take the normal A, B, C, D multiple choice question exam. All right. Take the written. The second way is you can go to an EC Council authorized testing center and you can literally take the practical exam. Now, the practical exam is uh, where they basically, you go in and you have to know the tools, the techniques, and you actually have to do it. So that is kind of the simulator. So for people that were asking, like, are there sims? No, they don't have any sims in this exam anymore because they actually now have a separate exam you could take if you want to actually pass the practical side of it. So there are two ways you can achieve your CEH. All right? Thor, um... Here's the main feed, and here's the backup. The backup is the one that's got the little bit of lag, all right? It, it's actually, it's not lag, it's just that you'll be about 10 seconds behind me, all right? So if any of you are having a little bit of issues with your internet, what I would first recommend is try a different browser. To be honest with you, you know the browser I get the best performance at here in my own studio? Because I'm actually logged into the class, same as you. All right? One of my systems is actually logged in so I can see what you're seeing. And I noticed that with the new version of Edge, I really do get the best performance out of uh, being in the campus. But a lot of people tell me that they get better performance with, you know, Firefox, whatever you want to use. But if you're trying to actually connect and you're getting a little bit of lag or a little bit of breakiness, maybe try a different browser. So the browser does make a huge difference. So, but the first link I put up is the normal link. The second link is, in case it's getting a little choppy, it is a slower link. You don't miss nothing, it's exactly the same. The only difference is, in the regular link, when I say something, you hear it, within like a second or two. I mean, as soon as I say something, you hear it. On the alternate link, which is the secondary link I gave, when I say something, you don't hear it for about 10 seconds. But it's because of that buffering that allows that link to give people better performance in the classroom, especially with your firewall. Or, so if you're getting a little bit of choppiness, try the secondary link. It's the same exact thing the only difference is it buffers for about 10 seconds, and because of that buffering, you get a cleaner feed. So, all right. And finally, uh, before we get into starting the class, just to give everybody a little bit of a heads up, um, which a lot of you know, I went to a wedding last weekend, okay, because a lot of you were in my class right before the wedding. So I went to a wedding last weekend, and I think I got sick. So <laughs> I've been fighting off something. I tested for COVID, and it told me negative, but I'm definitely fighting something. So if you hear me break a little bit more and take a little bit more drinks, or I apologize, um, my voice is just a little hoarse, and I'm just a little bit under the weather. So I do apologize if I'm not uh, projecting as loud as I normally will. So, all right. Will, in preparation for the class, I have set up a Cali with Metasploit as a VM. Are there any other utilities that we should use in advance to be ready? Yeah, actually, oh, you're probably not going to want to hear this. 
Okay. Uh, remove Cali. I know what you're probably thinking because you probably love Cali, so do I. All right. But the CEH does not use Cali anymore. I just happen to have one set up. Welcome to the wonderful world of Parrot. This is the actual hacking system that they will be talking to you about on the exam. This is the Parrot hacking system. Now, listen. This is a 100% completely built, fully running hacking server. I did absolutely nothing to it. This is the exact way that you download it. I did not add anything. I did not change anything. I left it exactly the way it is as you get it in the download. Okay? So, um, if you are using Kali. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Kali and Parrot. These are both Linux-based systems. They are Linux-based hacking systems. The one that was the most popular, the one that everybody used, including me, for many, many, many years was Kali. The problem with Kali is that it didn't come with every tool that was needed. Today, with Parrot, you get all of the tools that you need. Everything you need is included. Let me show you something. When we go under applications, not only do you get all kinds of tools and penetration testing. Look at this. They have actual hacking tools for automobiles. You want to learn how to hack into computer systems on automobiles? Here's all the tools you need. So, what you want to do is you want to make sure that Parrot is the one you're using. Now, you can go out to, uh, I believe, Parrot.org. All right, you can go out to, like, Parrot.org, uh, same with, like, Cali.org, uh, and you can grab them directly from Parrot. Now, listen, if you still want to use Cali, let me just put it to you like this. If you still want to use Cali, you can. If you are... If you are familiar with Kali Linux, and that's the one you like, you know what? I would just say stick with it. All right? I would just say stick with it. So, because Linux is Linux. The commands are basically, you run the commands the same exact way. Matter of fact, half my videos that were done in Kali... When everything switched to Parrot, I told Shane not even to redo the videos. Because it's the same commands, it's the same utilities. So if you are a big fan of Kali Linux, and you want to stick with that, you know what, you're going to be alright. Because if you're going to take the exam, everything that they ask you is going to be exactly the same. It's the same commands, it's the same operating system. The only real difference is that Parrot gives you a lot more tools. I mean, Cali has nothing in there for automobiles. So you get a lot more tools. So you are going to be tested and talked about with Parrot. But if you want to use Cali, go ahead. All right. Basically, they're the same. But other than that, is there anything else that you need to do? No. Matter of fact, do you even need to download Parrot or Kali to do this class? No. You don't need to download either. There are no, there is no homework. All right? There are no labs that you have to do. There's no chapters that you have to read before tomorrow. All right? There is no homework. Listen, most of you, if not all of you, are probably at work right now. You're already taking three hours out of your day to sit with me and learn about hacking. We do not expect 
that you're going to spend another two or three hours reading the book and doing labs. And you can do all that stuff when the class is over. The most important thing, if you can do it, is show up to class. Because you have me here live. You can ask questions. You can show up to class. Everything that you want to practice and do, you can do when the class is over. I'm still going to be available to you. My email address is not going anywhere, and you can always email me after the class is over. But your primary focus, if you're limited on time, is try to at least make the classes. All right? And I got a whole bunch of tricks and things to help you get ready to get better at all this stuff. All right? So I'm going to give you some great websites. I'm going to give you some great tools. So, all right? But it's basically going to run you $1,200 and a couple hundred bucks if you want to um, get the uh, retake. Now, Thor, just to let you know too, some people have said this to me in the past and Thor is in that uh, predicament. Um, a lot of you will not be able to install Kali or Parrot on your work systems. Listen, this entire system is 100% a hacking tool. Every single thing in here is for hacking. When you go to install this onto a machine, your antivirus, and depending on what things you have on your network, you have like intrusion detection systems and prevention systems, they are going to go haywire. When they see these tools on the network, they are going to go ballistic. Your antivirus is going to start blowing up. You may get all kinds of warnings and stuff through your intrusion detection and prevention systems. Because think about it. You are literally uh, loading a 100% full hacking server. It's going to actually show up on every every one of these tools is pretty much on the list of things that shouldn't be in your network. So when you go to install this, it's, it's going to go haywire. So if you can install it at work, all right? Listen, if you're running Windows 10, as long as you're not running home, all right, if you're running Windows 10 Pro, or Windows 10 Enterprise, then you can actually install Hyper-V right onto Windows 10. All right, Windows 10 comes with Hyper-V. So you can install this into your own personal Windows 10 virtual machine. All right, now listen, if your company does not allow hacking tools on their network. Do not put this on a corporate box. I do not want you coming into this class and leaving with a pink slip because you did something that broke your company rules. And we're going to talk a lot about that in this course. Because when you talk about hacking, one of the most important things you got to con concern yourself with is making sure you have permission through your company. And I'm going to talk about how you should get that permission. Because it should be in written form. All right? But you want to make sure I have actually seen people. Here's the problem. I'm going to pick on Thor. Thor has been through a lot of my classes. So I know Thor. So I'm going to use him as my example. Thor says to himself, you know, I just went through this hacking course. I'm going to see if my firewall or maybe my web server or whatever is secure. So I'm going to take Parrot and I'm going to attack my web server to see if anybody can get into my web server. The problem that you run into is as the IT director, I might be monitoring the actual web server. And I see that Thor is attacking my box. 
Now, Thor is not doing anything evil. He's not trying to be evil. He's actually not trying to do any damage. He is literally trying to help us to see if we have any vulnerabilities. But Thor did not let anybody know he was going to do it. He did not get permission. Let me tell you something. I have seen people lose their job over this. This is not, you know, I joke around a lot in these classes. This is, I'm not joking. All right, I have seen people lose their job over this. Because I don't know if Thor is being a white hat and just trying to see if I have any vulnerabilities. But then again, I don't know if Thor is just a pissed off employee who's trying to hack into my server. Because 90% of all hacks are done by employees. So if I go to Thor and Thor says to me, oh, wait a minute, no, no, no. I was just testing it to see if we were secure, but he didn't get permission. He still could lose his job. So you got to be very careful if you're going to be doing these kinds of things. And one of the biggest things that I can recommend is make sure that you have permission. Don't do it on your own. All right. All right. Now, besides having Parrot, I also have a full running server that's up and running. There are going to be things in this class that you do have to know about when it comes to operating systems. All right, something that you need to understand. Hackers know operating systems probably better than you do. It does not matter that we are all IT people. I have been doing this job over 30 years. There's not too much I don't know about when it comes to working on a network. Okay? I don't know everything, but I can pretty much set up a network almost blindfolded. I don't even come close to probably what most professional hackers know. I know how to set it up. I know how to fix problems. I know how to make it work. They actually know how the code runs in the background. Most hackers know operating systems better than we do. So that is part of the problem. We are in a nonstop fight. All right? We are in a nonstop fight. This is the way of the future. Luckily, as I always joke around, I'm at the end of my career. I'm in my 50s. All right? I'm getting to, I'm to the twilight of my career. For a lot of you that are younger or just getting into the industry or, you know, you're still young enough, a good part of your job throughout the rest of your career is going to be cybersecurity. This is the new battlefield. All right? We're not going to probably see too many wars like we used to years ago with soldiers. A lot of the warfare is going to be taking place through the internet. And that's where we come into play. So this is going to be something that you're going to be doing for the rest of your career. So everything you learn in here is going to help you. All right? It's going to help you. So, so download, get this stuff set up. Play with it. Start learning how to do it.